everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're just going to be working on uh, the uh, fire poker that I started making the other day. Uh, I put a, a 10 mil thread on the end of it here uh, using my old imperial lathe. I think it was an interesting video. Check, check that one out uh, if you haven't already seen it. What I'm going to do now is uh, just put a handle on it, which is what this thread's for. This handle will go over there. It was just a piece of wood that I had kicking around. Uh, I think it was actually from a dead tree that I cut up here on the property. So it was nothing, nothing fancy. If you look real close, you can see a few little tiny borer holes here and there. I think that will just add to the rusticness of it, if that's a word, rusticness. Um, I put a 12 mil hole through here. This diameter here I've turned down to 12 mil. It's, um, I had to drill this from one from each end so the holes didn't quite line up but it gives it a, a nice tight feel on there so that's not going to slide around or anything. I made this the other day. This was an old bolt that uh, used to hold the blades on my slasher. It's all worn smooth on the bottom from whizzing around against the grass at a million miles an hour. So that, that threads onto the end there. This one will go on here. All I need to make is some kind of washer up here to stop that rub it against that and make it look a bit nicer. I've got another piece of bolt here. I've already stolen the threaded part off here to fix something else. So what I'll do now is I'll just drill a 12 mil hole through that, clean up this face, then uh, that, that'll slide onto there. I'll be able to cut this to whatever length I need, screw that on the end there and that'll hold it all tight. Then we'll go over to the forge, I'll heat up the end here, make some kind of fire poker on the end. So. Let's just go over to the lathe. It's a, this is a simple uh, machining job, but if you uh, haven't got a lot of experience on a lathe, it's uh, sometimes handy just to see the simple stuff as well. So come over to the lathe. I've got my three-jaw chuck on here. Because this is a hexagon, there's six sides, I can just pop that in there and it'll all run true. So I'll just leave it sticking out a little bit here so that I can face it off to right up to the edge of the hexagon. I might have to tap it around a bit just to get it to run through. Actually, that's uh, true enough already. I don't know whether you can see that, but I'll just bring you in for a closer look. You can see there it's not wobbling around or looking weird, so that's good enough. I'll just I'll just tighten it up now. That ain't going no place. That's one of those things you say when you're tying your trailer down. First thing I'll do now is face that off there. This is my uh, high speed steel turning tool. It's something I just ground up myself. You don't need to have carbide tools all the time. Um, it's pretty easy to grind them up. Once you understand the, the principles, you can you know, make any kind of shapes you like. If, you guys, if you'd like me to give you a demo on how to grind up one of these, just let me know in the comments. But uh, this one's good enough for what I need to do now. I'll just pop it in the tool holder here. These little things are all quick release. It's not obviously not part of the original lathe. The old tool post was worn out that came with this machine. So uh, I bought one of these little quick change tool post, they make life much easier. So we'll just pop that on there. Now it's always important that you have your tool on centre height. Centre height means exactly, the point of the tool exactly level with the centre of the spindle. So we'll just tighten those up first. There's a number of ways you can get your tool on centre height. Now I I know that this machine is exactly five inches from the top of the bed. You can see where I'm pointing. From the top of the bed to the center of the spindle is exactly five inches. That's what makes this a 10 inch lathe. It means that a, a 10 inch piece of metal would be able to spin around here without hitting the bed. So all I do is measure from the, you can see that, you probably can't. Measure from the bed up to the point of the tool 
and that's a little bit low. So I'll just undo this one, tighten up that one a bit. Get my head out of the light. Still a bit low. And you can get it pretty accurate. It's good, good to get them as close as you, as you can to being on centre. I'll soon know when I face this off because it'll leave it, if I'm too low, it'll leave a little dimple there. If I'm too high, it'll just start pushing and won't cut anymore. So everything else is tightened up and I've got my safety glasses. Can't have that. Get the safety police onto me. Just touch it off. Lock up the, the carriage so it can't move. This is also high tensile steel, so it will uh, be a bit harder to cut than your easy machining mild steel. Just slow it down a bit now so I get a better finish. If you want to see how the speeds work on this lathe, I put up a video a couple of weeks ago on how that all works. So here my change gears whizzing around back there. I don't need those in. They were from when I was screw cutting. So I'll just uh, drop those out. Stick to my own rules. Unplug it when you're mucking around with these things. Because if you get your fingers in here, they'll just take them straight off if the machine starts up. With them down there, they'll be out of mesh. And that won't wear the gears out and everything for no particular reason. Never hurts to take your tool out when you're doing something else. That way you don't 
stab yourself or scratch yourself with it. We're going to drill a 12 mil hole through it now. Start off with a center drill. I'm going to speed it up a bit because the center point of a center drill is quite small. So we'll go back to the speed where we were before. Nice to our little centre drill. Put a pilot drill down there first, just to make life easy. I just pick something out, I think that's about a 6mm. Really all it needs to be, as long as it's wider than the web of, your, of the main size drill you're doing. So that little point there where, where it's, the drill would be just pushing, that's called the web. And then the pilot drill needs to be at least bigger than that, if that makes any sense. That ain't doing much. Maybe that drill's blunt. Let's see a bit of a build up there. Come and I'll show you how to sharpen a drill. It's always good to have a nice flat grinding wheel when you're trying to sharpen something. So this is a, a sharpening stick it's made out of something called carborundum. It's like the same material as a grinding wheel, only much harder. That actually takes away any dull surface on the wheel and flattens it right out so everything's good. guys would like a full description on how to sharpen a drill you don't need fancy equipment you can do it by hand with just a little bit of practice um, let us know down in the comments and I'll uh, I'll do a video video just on sharpening drills and uh, I'll give you a full description and show you how to do it get an old drill or something and we can go over and over and over and uh, wait till it sinks in an old bloke showed me how to do this when I was about 16 He'd be about 120 by now. The trick is to get a nice clearance back this way. Um, 
the angles the same on both teeth and the length the same on both on both cutting edges so that's looking pretty close yeah so drop a comment below if you want me to uh, give you a demo on how to sharpen a drill by hand because it's high tensile steel. If I had that perfectly even, both of the chips would be coming out identical. So you can see I haven't quite got it even because only one big chip's coming out. That also means the drill's going to cut a little bit oversized, but it doesn't matter for a pilot hole. But I'll, cut, I'll revisit that drill later on and, and sharpen it a bit better. This drill's 12 mil. I might slow that down a little bit more. Let's see how that looks. I'll probably do a video on calculating cutting speeds. You kind of get a feel for it after a while, but when you're starting out, it's always good to calculate the speed so you know you're not going to burn your drill out, you're not going to cause other problems. just breaking through the other side. I think. Yep. And oh it's making such a racket. Unless I've worn that drill out too. I don't burn myself. If you look right at the point here, you can get it to focus. You can see it's rounded off. So that high, high tensile steel is giving these drills a bit of a hard time. That's all right. I'll just give that a touch up as well. For some reason that bolt is really hard. It's one of the problems in working with uh, crap steel but anyway um, we'll get through it. I might just uh, do a chamfer from the other side and get rid of that. Just a big burr in there now. Just 
just put a chamfer on this side while we're here. That's all we need. I'll just turn them around. Not too hot. You can see here, it's almost through, but it's just pushed a bit of a, a daggy burr up there. I'm not sure what's going on. But I should just be able to clean that out, even if I drill a bit from the other side. I don't want to take off the pattern, because that's what makes it look like a bolt. So we'll just get that like that, give it a spin. Looks like it's running true, or true enough for what we need. Now that I've trued that up, I'll just see if I can drill it from this side. Get that out of the way. stuff. Just folding that burr back in the other way. This will probably whinge and complain. bit over the size I wanted but it won't matter it's a fire poker just put a little chamfer on there so there's no sharp edge See now if it all fits together. Alrighty, so that bit goes on there, like that. This bit goes on there. I have to get all my greasy fingerprints off later. So I'll just also just put a radius on the end of that wood so it looks nice. Now I still have to bore out the timber here so that that piece fits in there and I'll have to 
just make sure the lengths all work. If not, I'll cut a little piece off the end of that. So let's do that then. The diameter out here is uh, 16 mil, which is pretty close to 5 8 As this machine is graduated in inches, it's, I'll be going for 625 thou in there. Would be nice if I could square that off, and I'm a little reluctant to turn that right out there. Maybe just light cuts and a bit faster. I just use my chamfering tool. Keep my head out the way. Some people have a problem machining wood in a metal lathe. I'm not one of those people. back in. I'll need to go about an inch deep. So this isn't a critical size, so if I go down to that mark on my boring bar, we'll be good. Just got to clear it. I don't need to worry too much about the 16 mil diameter because uh, that's just going to be clearance as well. Um, you can see that this, well, you can't see it now, but that hole was running out a little bit. We've got about 13 mil there, so we take out 3 mil. About 90 thou, I think. There's 40. Got about 55 thou to go, I measure it in inches. Oh, it's right on it. So we've got to give it a bit of clearance. Right on 625. So we'll give it another oh, 20 thou. Perfect. So I'll just put a bit of a radius on the edge of that. Bit of uh, sandpaper should do the job.
I think this is going to bottom out before it goes all the way in. Oh, I just got a tiny little, tiny little gap in there now. Got a lot of soft drawers, haven't you? call that done. That went all the way up there now. So there we have one rustic looking fire poker handle. Um, I'll give that a bit of an oil up later on and uh, next we'll uh, get to putting a hook on the end or some kind of uh, fire poker shape. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you'd like more details on any of the stuff you've seen today um, just let me know. And we'll see you on the next one. I, I can't really see you. <laughs>